Okay, hello, good afternoon, or good morning, oh, good afternoon, I would say. So thank you very much for inviting me and um, giving me a chance to speak to you. You know, with YPO, I, I was connected first time about 10 years ago. I had a speech like today in Prague to YPO people. And uh, why I am so glad to be here again was that when I had a speech in, a, in, a, in, a, in a Prague, two years later, I was talking about the charity, about people from business, what is our role in life, what we should do, what, how is the life from my point of view. And I was talking about my charity, which I established in Slovakia 12 years ago. And after my speech in Prague, two young entrepreneurs came to me and told me, you know what, Andre, do we like your charity, the idea of the charity? Can we establish in Czech Republic the same? We have the same feeling about the purpose of life, what we should do in our life, how we should structure, what is main purpose, why we are on the earth. And I said, yes, of course. I would be glad if managers, good managers, with uh, some source of financing, with manager skills, would establish a charity like mine is here in Slovakia. And we did it. And a couple of years ago, the Good Angel in Czech Republic became, the same as in Slovakia, one of the most char successful charities in Czech Republic. So that's why I am uh, so glad to have a chance to speak to you, how you see your life, how you see, from your point of view, the purpose of life, what you should get, where, you want to go. So first, let me say a couple of things about um, myself. I know that uh, today you have the, the discussion about innovations, if I'm right. Yes, centralist innovation. And I hope that you do not expect from me as a president to speak about artificial intelligence or whatever like this. Uh, although I am electrotechnical engineer, I am electrotechnical and my diploma was studying uh, defects of crystal cube of gallium arsenide after your implantation. I was doing this for three years, so I could have maybe some ideas, but no, I would not speak really about uh, the real innovations, and I, I am sure that you had great speakers talking about that. I would tell you, yes, about the innovation, but innovation from my personal perspective, how I did my personal innovations. For me, innovation is something like a symbol of, of change. To be ready to dramatically something change. You who are in business, you know that that's all, even when I was in business, it was all saying, if you do not innovate, you will die. And to have innovation is not easy because you have to change sometimes procedures, you have to change the system of your work, you even have to sometimes change the subject of, of your business. And we as a people, we are lazy. We like to, if things are going always in the same way, we would like to wake up in the morning to do something, then later evening go home to be with wife, with kids then to fall asleep and in the morning again and again and again. And we are, most of people are nervous if you tell them that we have to change something. Let's change it. Because change is a symbol of changing the life and each change it makes a lot of, even the troubles for people. And, it's, and from my business point of view, when I was in business, the most difficult were changes when you were successful. You are successful, you are good, and you came to your company, to your manager and said, hey, we have to change it. We have to think of maybe if what could happen in 10 years, so let's change it. And all people will tell you, oh, you are crazy. We are doing so great. We increase our business 20, 50, 100 person per year and you want to change? No, don't tell me about that. No, <laughs> and that's the duty of us as the people who were, you are, I was managing a company to to persuade people that we have to change it. So I would like to tell you about my 
personal changes and maybe to to try to find an answer to maybe one of the most difficult questions which I had a couple of years ago. Must uh, managers, entrepreneurs, bankers go to hell? Or they have a chance, at least a chance to go to heaven. How it is being rich, having expensive iPhone watches, cars, using a business class for flying, even having personal airplanes. Can we get? Do we have a chance to go to heaven? So let me tell you about these changes. When I was 27 years old, we had in the so socialism collapsed in our country. And being an electrotechnical engineer, I decided to emigrate, to go to the United States and to live there. I have one small son. My wife was pregnant. We expected second baby. And I came to New Jersey, close to Philadelphia. Knocking here, I am electrotechnical engineer at the time from Czechoslovakia. Could you hire me? No, no one wanted to hire engineer from previous socialist block. So I started to cleaning floors, building the building the building the buildings, constructing the buildings, and. Uh, at certain time, I was working 100 hours a week. 100 hours a week, it's every day from 9 in the morning till 11 at night. And on Saturday and Sunday, or 6 in the morning till 11 at night. If you calculate it together, it's 100 hours a week. And I was getting $4 per an hour. Of course, under table. So I was living there. My wife at home, we got the, our daughter was born. We were living five Slovaks in a small room in a small room uh, with no air condition under the roof. You know how it is on the east coast of the US. At night, I woke up, swept. Cockroaches was going around as I was killing cockroaches of my naked body. And I was living there for one and a half year. And in the end, I got the chance. One person came to me and told me I was working in a small shop, something like 7-Eleven cleaning the floors and working as usual. So, so. And one person came to me, Andre, you know what, you speak several languages, Russia, Polish, Czech, Slovak, English. What about if we send you back to Czechoslovakia and you open a branch for us there? Oh, yes, I'm coming back as a CEO of an American company. But Andre, you know what, to be sure that you are really, that we can trust you, we do invest in our company and buy some shares. So almost all my money, which I earned in one and a half year, I invest in the, the company. I came back home, first time in my, in my life, I saw my daughter who was one year old already. After one and a half years seeing my son, my, my wife. And in six weeks, the company came to bankers. So I was 29 years old, no money, no job being on the street and thinking, what to do with my life? And as again, innovations for me are changes. Changes. I decided to go for business. I, you know, I really liked in the, in the US young people dying having own businesses. It's a big problem in our countries in, here in Central Europe that many young talented people more finishing universities, more think about a good company and good in, on CVs to have to work for a good company, instead of thinking, can I change? Can I take my life into my own hands at, to be an entrepreneur? So I came to business and I really don't want to bother you with all the, my business story. I was in business for 15 years roughly, from absolutely zero with my brother and my cousin who established financial company, which in uh, roughly 15 years, and Mario is here, <laughs> He's a witness. He was one of the one of the men who were buying our at that time he was working in bank. And they bought our company. They bought our company for roughly 45 million euros in 15 years. And of course, being uh, being then in, in business, again, innovations for me were changing. I was it was nice to have a really private airplane with my brother flying to Poprad. 
It was nice to have the most expensive Mercedes. Everything was nice. But was this a really purpose of life? Should we, does it make us happy? And I realized that I got a lot from life. And I decided to change my career. And I decided to do as, uh, to, to help people. To, to having this money, which I got selling the companies, I had this privilege to really to spend the rest of my life. And that's what I'm doing, trying to help, to serve people. So I established a charity, Good Angel in Slovakia. I put there 1 million euro from my money and the charity became very, it was very transparent. It's a very transparent charity, fantastic project, <laughs> helping children with cancer, families where children have cancer and it helps financially. The charity becomes most successful charity in Slovakia getting we already put like the charity distributed like more than 40 million euros to 6,000 families and maybe you get a book from me which I was wrote then later and there is something more about the project and again again and again innovations are changes and I was thinking okay charity is great we are helping thousands of families, so fantastic. I was managing also, not just the finances, but also managing the, the, the charity. So I said, Is it, should I help more our country? At that time, many people came to me, especially from political parties and saying, hey, Andre, you were a fantastic manager. You got the title manager of the year. You are a fantastic philanthropic. You got a, even philanthropist of the year. Couldn't you join our political party? And I said, never. I will never be a politician. I don't go to this dirty job with so many problems. Never, ever. In Slovakia, we have saying, never say never. And really working um, in the charity, visiting children oncology centers, You sometimes realize what are real problems and what are just problems in our head. I remember first time I had one small girl in my hands. At that time, my daughter was exactly the same age. And I knew that the girl will die. And I had, in, I had her in my hands being on Children Oncology Center. Then I came back home having my own daughter. And then you really realize that our problems talking about money and new business plans and uh, whether we should sport more or we do not have enough hair or whatever, we do then understand that, we start to understand that real problems are absolutely different. And seeing what, what happens in our country with corruption, with uh, bad health care, I, I have seen many children which died just because we have a bad health care in our country. In the end, I decided to be a politician. Gandhi said that if you really want to help a people, if you really want to help your country, sooner or later, you have to become a politician. So I was running for a president. I decided to be a president, trying to change, to help our country, not from the bottom, but from the top. I was running against our former prime minister. It was not easy, it was really dirty, but I won. And here now I'm staying as president, proud president of just a beautiful country. If you are foreigners, go away from Bratislava. Bratislava is not bad, but the real nice Slovak is a little bit further. I'm sorry for people from Bratislava, living in Bratislava. <laughs> and uh, with great people. And uh, maybe a little bit when we speak about, now I become a little bit presidential speech. When we speak about innovation, and when we speak about the chances, whether you will be in hell or heaven, we really, our countries, our societies need people like you. 
we face very many challenges nowadays. We have migration, we have climate changes, we have terrorists, we, we are aging. We are aging. I was reading somewhere that in Japan in 2016, uh, more diapers for old people were selling there for the infants. So we became, we really, we, we, it's so many challenges going around. And also we have some news, because, thanks to internet, the world becomes smaller. We have a feeling that something happens in somewhere in China or in Africa. It, it, we have a feeling that it happens next to us. Thanks to that, we have a feeling that the world is really small. But so many challenges, and if we see raising of populism, nationalism, we are losing the identities because of globalization. So many issues. And to be open, who can help our countries, our societies, if not you? People having manager skills, people having very often nice source of money or financing, people able to, to help, to change. And if we are trying to find the answer for question whether we have to, as a rich people, go to hell because we use other people working for us and, and so on and so on and we are rich and other are poor. I think the answer is to be rich is not a sin if we understand that we have to share our success with others. That it's our moral duty to give part of success back to society. And it's up to you whether you establish the charity or help charities, or even if you decide really to help our countries and become politicians. So that's my life. That's my feeling about innovations. And that's my answer to which I put to for myself to question whether we can go to hell whether, whether we must go to hell or we can go to heaven. And one or, or more last saying, Shantideva, Indian philosopher, said that most unhappy people are people who think about happiness for themselves. The most happy people are people who think about happiness for others. And trust me, my feeling is that it's absolutely true. Thank you very much.